Uh, now I call upon Dr. Olika Bansal. She'll be talking about uh, AI in corneal conditions. Uh, yeah. Please go ahead. Talk. Yeah, perfect. Arvind, you are the chairman of this program. By the time the slides come, you can introduce yourself and. Yes, sorry. So uh, I welcome you all uh, for this uh, wonderful session on uh, everything real about the unreal artificial intelligence in ophthalmology. And uh, I would like to welcome Padma Shri Professor Dr. S. Natrajan, who is a doyen of ophthalmology, international figure. And he has done a lot of work uh, in the field of diabetic retinopathy. And I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Arun Shetrapal. He is a prolific uh, surgeon from Ajmer, from my hometown. And uh, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Rolika Bansal, who is a young champion in the field of ophthalmology, winning all the awards. So, and uh, myself, uh, I am professor and head at the uh, All India of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. Over to you, Dr. Rolika. Thanks. So just a disclaimer that I'm presenting this presentation on behalf of Dr. Modini. Uh, so uh, this is absolutely her work. And uh, since she couldn't be here as she had some prior commitments and travel issues. So this is her presentation and absolutely hers. I'm just speaking on her behalf. So I'll be talking on the AI component on cataract and uh, uh, glaucoma component as well. So as, as everybody has already quoted, artificial intelligence in ophthalmology could be either traditional machine learning or deep learning. And uh, when we talk about deep learning, it is basically self-learning from the secondary sources, which could be either in the massive training artificial network form or the convolutional net neural network form. And traditional machine learning has been explained very well over here, and that would be on model for diagnosis for ophthalmic conditions. So as you can see, it's a beautiful chart where it shows that a traditional healthcare system, one ophthalmologist can cater to 4,000 people in a year. However, when we integrate the traditional healthcare system and the AI-based tertiary referral system, as Dr. Natarajan sir has very beautifully shown with his forest uh, example, when we combine that, we can actually serve more than 40,000 people per year. That is a 10 times increase manifold. So artificial intelligence is a way of making a computer robot or software think and act like a human. This is very well known. So we have to understand that we have to also make sure that we are doing good in the process. It should not be an erroneous uh, diagnosis as well. The theory and development of computer systems is able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. So it is basically the use of computer system to perform tasks which are normally associated with uh, human intelligence. As you can see over here, AI has enabled virtual assistants and uh, it is reducing unnecessary, just one second, there's some echo coming, could you please help me out? Yeah, that's fine now. It's still echoing, but okay, I'll go ahead. So the AI-enabled virtual assistants are basically reducing the unnecessary hospital visits. It is giving 20% of time back to the nurses. We are able to help them out. The workflow assistants are also helping doctors see up, free up 17% of their schedules. And we all know that we, even as ophthalmologists, have quite a, work, a working hectic schedule. Pharmaceutical companies are researching life-saving medicines in a fraction of time and cost as it traditionally takes. In, we have been able to bring healthcare to underdeveloped nations. And in a, in a developing nation like ours, we are able to reach out to more people. And uh, the cause of blindness in India, as known, 62% is due to cataract and refractive error, also holds a very high stake. And so it is important to cater to the same. As you can see over here, there is a triple module. There's a prediction module, wherein the prediction metrics uh, we are able to analyze. There's a dispatching module, and there's a telehealth module. Telehealth module is, module is where the patients that need uh, intervention 
are screened. And over here, you can see that the rescheduling of inter after intervention is also taken care of. So the patient really actually gets a, a reminder or like a, an individual follow-up plan that they need to come back and have a follow-up. So that also helps. So as you can see over here, I would again highlight that Sir has beautifully shown how diabetic retinopathy can be screened by the software that they are using. And over here, AI-based cataract screening can also be done. So we can send, we can actually cater to a larger community by the AI-based screening. And over here, you can see that the identification network in a large population, one can assess that, okay, there are three particular eyes which require or might have, might require an intervention. After that, there is an evaluation network where the, using the cruiser intelligence, you can compare and do a risk stratification at which particular patient requires an intervention sooner. Then there are strategist networks wherein you can actually categorize considering the area, density and the location that these patients require surgery or the ones which require follow-up. At the same time, in uh, the evaluation of IOL power over here, you can see that AI has played a major role in assessing the IOL power either by the optical formula or the machine learning formula, and it has turned out to be useful and more precise, as I must say. So it is improving, improving the accuracy of biometry. So you can see over here that multiple machines that are required by an individual by all of us have actually been has actually been combined to a bladeless femtolaser with artificial intelligence and that makes our life easier isn't it uh, very difficult to buy n number of expensive machines putting it together in one with more precision over here you can see that supervised machine learning algorithm it basically means that there is a classifier there is a cross validation and a performance measurement uh, also, you can see that these are the uh, basic programs which have been able to identify the errors which are being made. So here, the Novi surgeon, which is uh, who is learning to do phaco chop, has been able to assess whether the hand position is correct or not. The holding of instruments. When the, here, you can see the eye is not in primary. The safety with the cannula use. Uh, the surgeon is not really holding the hub of the cannula. So these can be identified and these can be corrected. So you can actually put your surgery through and assess whether you uh, require any change or not which can be covered by artificial intelligence. So over here you can see that there's an initial uh, grouping in a refractive error like myopia. So myopia screening is done, you've established the files, you've done an AI analysis, you've done a progression risk stratification and then there's a continuous management. It doesn't end here. The patient continuously keeps getting an AI based uh, analysis. Over here you can see that multiple formulas are required. We've all had these formulas, we're aware of them. However, the artificial intelligence based formula, that is Clark Neural Network or Hill RBF Calculator also exist, making it as easy as possible. And another example is when you have to assess uh, the disc status in glaucoma patients. It has been shown by Sir previously as well that the fundus photo, the OCT imaging and the perimetry imaging, all of that have been put into the AI algorithm, which can be classified into likely glaucoma, not classifiable or not glaucoma. And you can see here the LANET architecture, that is the a particular software wherein the ROI extraction is done, the optic disc and optic uh, cup segmentation can be assessed in the unit model, the feature extraction can be done in the uh, more higher models, and then the classification can be done in glaucoma or in healthy disc, as seen over here. You can see that the cup height and the disc height can actually be very well compared, and you can assess whether the patient has glaucoma or not. So this is major screening that we are looking at. And also the uh, error correction can be done by AI. So the noisy OCT imaging can be denoised and we can um, sh filter out the artifacts that can be seen. So as I have explained earlier that the data acquisition, the data processing and analysis, it can be done along with featured extraction, however, followed by the pattern classification and then decision about whether it is normal or glaucomatous. As beautifully explained by Sir, that the uh, diabetic retinopathy component has, has also been very well um, assessed by artificial learning. So. Uh, all I can say is that artificial intelligence cannot really replace human intelligence, but artificial intelligence can surely reach where human intelligence cannot. And uh, Professor Natarajan has shown a very good example for the same. Thank you. W wonderful, uh, Rolika. Anybody wants to question or uh, comments? Arun? 
field can you be ready in the next few years uh it would be good to uh, see artificial intelligence helping us in especially the biometry because uh, i feel that the biometry is a very important part of cataract surgery and most of the errors which creep in so uh, wh where do you think the uh, artificial intelligence can help us in biometry i in fact feel that the assessment by uh, by artificial intelligence is going to be more precise in biometry than the human uh, 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 assessment because of of course there is more chances of errors in human assessment than artificial intelligence assessment in biometry zone not only that i feel that uh, by just looking at the a scan the ai should be able to tell us whether this a scan has been done properly or not or it needs to be done again or something like that yes. i think there's one field where it can help in help us in and uh, wonderful talk dr rolika thank you very much so uh, again courtesy Arvind, you to want dr to make a comment or something yeah means uh, i would like to quote uh, one ai based uh, means app uh, application that is, that can be placed uh, over the glasses and uh, so uh, when we are doing uh, all our daily routine work so that it decides which type of intraocular lens should be implanted in that particular type of person so ai has definitely evolved and it is helping uh, uh, the ophthalmologists and uh, helping uh, in the cause of serving the uh, mankind thank you thank i you. think as you everybody uh, mentioned i think you also rolika mentioned that it's not going to replace doctors but at the same time uh, definitely we should any technology i think uh, whether it's a fake machine or a vitrectomy machine or a car we have to be the master and we should not be a slave to the technology we should know to use them i mean there are robotic cleaning available it's all ai based yeah, which cleans definitely means i believe personally believe and i worked in ai also we have developed a few applications so uh, whatever we are developing it needs to be supervised AI should not replace the judgment of uh, ophthalmologists, but it should rather assist the yeah. ophthalmologists in judging and Definitely. deciding. Yes. Definitely. But here we are using AI where we, the, even I illiterate. Yeah. I tell them any sweeper we can train them. Instead of only doing that, he can train do the retina. He can take photo and then the AI will do the thing. The AI will, will be done by the doctor. Yeah. So it's a, we can use the technology to the as an assistant every to human being.